and now it's finally I must have not quite had that pull in. Hello, everybody. Okay, so I hope you can find your way back. I do apologize. This is part two of our final of the puppies. So I'm very excited about this, and I apologize. I don't. Hi, Jody, you found me. I have no idea what happened. But the picture went, and every time I tried to start it back up, it kept wanting to take it from the laptop camera, which is a bad camera. So let's get back to this, because I hopefully, oh, Francis, and I, oh, yay, everybody, I'm so tickled. I felt terrible, but I don't know what happened. I have this thing called an HD capture. We had to spend money for one of these. And it allows my webcam, this cam, to interface with my laptop, which is right here, so that I can do a better job live streaming for you. And I had a mess of a time. I don't know why, but it just it wasn't acknowledging, and it kept wanting to film through my laptop camera, which is awful. Michelle Lang, hello, sweetheart. So we were we're working on this is the last night of the puppy quilt. So let me show you what I've been working on. What I started to do when I moved the camera and that messed up everything. I don't know what happened. All right, I always tell you the things that I don't like as well as the things that I do like. And with this, with this quilt, I thought I could do a little fur thread painting. Well, I don't like it. Do you see how I tried to put a little, if you look at this, the photo that I'm using, see how the light shines, makes his forehead look a lot lighter? Well, I thought if I did a wee bit of stitching that it would show even lighter than the gray that I put here. Well, it just looks weird. It looks like he's got a strange hat on or a, a Three Stooges Mo haircut. So I'm going to pull this out. Do not like that at all. So, you know, some quilts, I've done fur on the animals. But this one doesn't seem to want it. And so I'm going to take this odd little cap thing he's got going here and pull this out. So I wanted to show you. I had pulled out some of them. But I have decided that this is just going to have a clean look. It is not going to have any or not much in the way of thread painting for the fur. And I think also because I fused it, it, it doesn't look right. It makes big holes in the fabric when I do the stitching. Let me show you what I mean. If you look right here, I've had a mess of a time trying to get rid of these holes. I've used water, my fingernail, I might get a little a clean toothbrush, but because this was fused, when I did the stitching for the thread, it made holes. So, I yeah, and I think you're right. By by doing the white thread, I it went way too light. So, but anyway, so I'm taking that out because that looked dumb. That just looked dumb. And, you know, that's the way I do my art quilts. I try certain things, and if they don't work, I take them out. But I don't leave them just because I've done it. I, if I don't like it, I take it out. Now, I had just started outlining his eyes, and I put a little white in the corners. But let's go down to this one's eyes. It's, Mark was even telling me I might just want to use the ink tints for the eyes because I'm having a hard time getting them a sharp and clear. One of the problems is if you look here on the original photograph is instead of having a nice dark eye with a highlight, 
the eyes are kind of coming out milky looking because of the way the light's shining on them. So I tried to replicate what I saw, but it's not giving me a sharp, nice, defined eye. So let me get some of, now where, let me get my little pencil sharpener, sharpen this white up a little. But let's see, I'm going to, and if you see the dogs don't have a whole lot, well, this light is kind of bothering here, but they don't have a whole lot of white showing in their eye. But I do want to make what white they do have nice and bright. And then I'll take the white and kind of go over the gray to make it look a little, a little brighter. And then I'm going to get my black, let me see, ink black. And I'm going to go in and go around. Sometimes when you're using thread painting for an eye and it's a small eye like this, it's hard to get it definite. It's... It's like the threads kind of cover each up, up. They cover the next one. So you don't have distinctive. Yeah, this is already helping. Do you see what I'm doing? Oh, Dora's here. You survived. No power. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Oh, honey, I'm so glad that you are okay, though. It's going to be hard to be without power for two weeks. I've been without power for five days before, and that was hard. Oh, sweetie, we are thinking of you, hon. But you feel safe. You feel like, you know, the, the worst is over. And Oh, you sweet thing. I am so sorry. Yeah, you know, people, if you haven't been without power, you might not realize just how difficult it really, really is. So, okay. So I'm thinking that it's funny, they, the way the puppy, let me show you again. See his little eyes? So they're kind of a whitish gray. And... With the highlight, it looks like it's almost a, a dark highlight. So it's, they're kind of looking unusual. But I think for right now, this is pretty good. Now I'm going to come in here in the nose and do a little bit more outlining. But Dora, thank you for letting us know, hon. I was worried about you. But... I think you're the only person that we know that was really in the way of the storm. And we want you to be so safe. Goodness gracious. All right. So I'm just kind of coming in here and giving a little more emphasis to his nose. Coming in, lightening the, the part that is showing there then i noticed he's got a little like bit of dirt like he's been playing and rubbing in the dirt so i'll put a little of that dirt color on his nose and i want to get a wee bit of pink here under that's from the pink skin under under his nose there all right, then I want to come in here. I was noticing this was another area. I was trying to do stitches in his ears, but it, I wasn't able. Oh, okay, sweetie. Take good care, hon. Take good care, love. Okay, so it was nice to see Michelle. She's a sweetheart. Okay. It's going to be strange. I'm going to have surgery and, and Michelle won't be here to visit me. She's taken me to surgeries before and everything. She's a doll baby. Okay, but now she had to move back home because she has a, a mess of grandchildren. And oh, isn't that wonderful? I'm so happy for her. 
Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm looking at this puppy. Oops, let me back this up a little so you can see. I'm looking at this puppy's ear here, and I'm using the, the thing I love about ink tints is it can go ahead and help do the last minute definition. I do everything I can first with fabric, then I come in and I do thread, and then I finish up with the ink tents because I want it to be as much a fabric and thread. Oh yes, I'm having surgery um, the 28th, sweetie. So I will be getting my kidney taken out. And luckily I've got another one that's in good shape. So it's in perfect shape. So I will do just fine. So let's see. Okay, so now I've given a little bit more definition to this ear. And it shows the folds and everything in that ear. Then I'll do a little bit of this darkness here. Now I'm going to come over to, whoops, I'm going to come over to this ear. And I want to come in and put a little more definition on this ear. And then also come in with a little bit of white to, I want to give it some realness. Some, is that a word? <laughs> but... I'm going to put a little more shading on this to make that come alive. And then I just noticed I need a little bit more tan here and a little bit more brown here. But the wonderful thing is you do the best job you can with your fabrics and your thread. And then you come in. With these, oh, thank you, sweetheart. Uh oh, okay. You know what, Dora? Thank you, honey, for letting us know how you are. And we're going to cross our finger that maybe you can get your power a little sooner. I'm hoping that all over the country they're sending their trucks to help you guys. You, you are in our thoughts and prayers, sweetheart. Thank you so much for letting us know how you are, hon. Take good care. So we care about all of y'all. I mean, you know, y'all are part of our family and we very much care about you. So I'm coming in here and adding a little bit more of a nice brown color. Because if you, you know, just what I'm seeing on this. Okay. What I'm seeing on the photograph, I'm just recreating. And this is going to help. To bring him alive. You just you just want to make it so you almost feel like you could play with him. So, and bringing some of the brown down onto this gray. Because it's actually, you know, both color hairs mixed there together. So, and then remember, I've got a container of... I've got a container of uh, a liquid gel medium, fabric medium, and then I will blend these colors together. So let me put some more color on this part of that ear and a little more down into here. All right, so let me try. Let's see now what it looks like, what I've done to this point. Let's just see. And I don't know if y'all can tell, I'm feeling so much better. I think um, getting my infection taken care of. And then, okay, now this is coming out too dark. So let me grab a paper towel and wipe the excess off. Hold on. And I do have a bowl of water here. Oh, the ear went too dark. So let me scrub it. There we go. Let me get off some of that extra. Keep a water and the rag around because you will need it, ladies. You will need it. All right. Now, I don't, I know this is wet and I can dry it. 
but I don't like that it's turning so gray inside. So I'm going to come in here with some little pink and try to rescue, try to rescue this cute little ear. Otherwise, if I can't rescue this, I'm going to have to keep scrubbing and scrubbing and get, get to, until I can get the color right. So let me see. I've got to be careful because that gray, the grays are so strong. Uh, all right, I think what I'm going to do, that's better. And, it's, and it is wet, so I can see what happens once, because I do want that to be a nice white, white pink. But just be careful that when you put the medium on, boy, is this it change. So just be careful. Okay. I think when it dries, it's going to be fine. If not, I'll keep tweaking the color because, uh, but that just shows you be really careful with ink tints. Because once you put that in water on it, or once you put any gel medium, the color just really comes alive. So I'm going to have my rag handy that wherever I put it, if it's too much, I can rub it off. Okay. Now, let me come under his nose and see what this does. Whoops. Do you see how that little, I, you could barely see I had any pink on there at all. And look how, look how it bloomed. Oh. Okay, so have your rag, have your water handy. And when the color blooms too much, I'm a heavy-handed person, I have to admit it. And uh, when a teacher was teaching me how to write, I had problems with being heavy-handed. Rinse your brush out often so you don't contaminate one light area with the dark area. Let me see what the eyes... Well, I'll have to see how the eyes are going to do since I did all of that. But just be careful and watch. Make sure to watch what the, how the color develops. But if you can see, you don't need much ink tents. It goes a long way. So try to remember, yes, they're expensive to buy, but they will last a long time, especially if you try to have a lighter hand with them. So, okay, I had to come back in here with some white because the gray that I put, just kind of overwhelmed everything. So you've got to be really careful with these. All right. Now let me see. Was there any... I'm going to try to get a little... that The pink below his lip. Actually, it's not that bad. If you look at the photo here, see how that pinky gray. So actually that that's not bad at all. So all right. I think these aren't going to be my best eyes, but I think they're going to be the best eyes for right now. And um, let me come back. Okay. All right. A little bit more black outline. I've got black thread there, but like I say, when you do the thread painting for the eyes, it tends to muddy it up. Okay. All right. Well, that's good for now. And I'm curious to see how this ear is going to do once it dries more. 
because I didn't like the way it turned so gray. I was I was trying to put a little gray in there, and boy, with ink tents, it doesn't take much. So be careful when you're using ink tents with the dark colors, because otherwise you're going to be doing a lot of work to lighten up what you've been doing. All right. All right, all right, all right. I think for now, oh, and I'll show you, I did the, um, I did the little toenails. You see them? I just did them with a zigzag stitch. The eyes, are, oh, good, good. Um, yeah, I think it did bring out the eyes. Now, this guy up here, I'm not sure how I'm going to do his eyes. I think I've only done a little white in the corners, and I've done some black outline. So I'm going to come in here and re-outline them. It's hard to do dark eyes on a dark dog. All right. Then I'm going to take the gray and try to fill in down here. I'm not sure how well these are going to work. Today. I might have to do some more thread painting in those first. And then let's put some white in to get that gray look. Okay, and the white's kind of on the top of the eye, or the light gray is sticking up. And then... I've got to, yeah, I think I'm going to have to, I am not able to get much to come up on these eyes. I'm going to have to do more thread painting on his eyes because just the ink tents is not enough. That kind of surprises me, but the ink tents itself is just not enough, but I can come along here and put a little bit of pink below his nose and right along the top of this lip just a little. Now let's see how that works. Okay, and be there with your rag because you need to be able to, to stop it, slow it down. Okay. All right. So now with him, one of the things I want to do is use the ink tents and t instead of that thread, use the ink tents to show a little bit lighter gray where the sun is shining. And I'm sorry I won't be able to show you his eyes. And then along this part of the ear, you know, just doing a little sun highlights. Okay, and over here by this eye down this edge, the edges of his ear are showing up lighter. Um, a little bit on the top of his nose. And then... Putting his nostrils in. Okay, now let me see how this will do. So, and you and I take a liquid gel medium. It's a white substance. And why why I do this? You can use aloe vera gel. Why I use this instead of water is it keeps the paint a more vivid color and keeps it from running through the, all of the fabric okay so that's one of the, that's one of the reasons now let me see if his nose will become more prominent he's going to be a tougher one i'm going to have to with his with him having so much black on him it's going to be hard like these nostrils i'm not sure if they're going to show up at all so I'm going to have to get a definite dark black 
and uh, and work on his on his nose. So okay. So I'm, I'm for to get his eyes to show. I'm going to have to do the thread painting like I did here. Yes, I am using a medium. Well, in fact, I've got it right here. It is chroma, chrome acrylic textile medium. Chrome acrylic textile medium. And I got it from on Amazon. I don't know if they still have this particular kind. But I've had this bottle for three or four years. You notice I keep it, not only do I keep it closed up, and standing up because the lid sometimes leaks but I keep it in this bag and tie it up afterwards because I don't want that to, to spill or evaporate all right so I'll make sure this ink tense isn't going to run here all right so I think let me see I'll do just a little Highlighting where the light is hitting. Because he's a black puppy, but there's just he's in so much light that <clears throat> it shows up as a gray. And I just want to make sure he's got all of that. So, and he's got his feet done. Now, you look what's happened. This gray from the ear has gone over into his foot. So I'm going to have to come here with this white. When you get ink tents, if you can buy additional pencils, the first thing you should buy is an extra white because you will use more of that than any because it can help, you know, that's what you do all your shading with. Um, you try to cover mistakes or spreading with it. And I use a little hand pencil sharpener because I don't want there. So now I've repaired his foot where the gray had run over. Okay. And I'm going to make sure to put a little bit more of the pretty fawn color on this little guy right down here. All right, so one thing Mark told me, you know, when I was doing the grass, he reminded me, don't put too much grass in because you don't want the grass, the, all that thread painting, to overwhelm the pups. You have to remember when you're creating, when you are creating a scene, what is the star of the scene? And it is these puppies. Another thing I had to do, I um, and I haven't decided whether I'm going to do it around this puppy or what, but I have found when I do these scenes that I want to make the dog kind of pop out of the background. And so I took a very, very dark brown because he's a tan and tannish golden brown. And I did a very fine zigzag all the way around him to help him pop. Because he kind of blends into the background. And as you can see, he kind of blends in. And I wanted him to, to be, I wanted you to look at one glance and see, that's a puppy sitting on the ground. So... If you can see here, I am, he does need a point of light in his eyes, doesn't he? So, and that's the, that's the toughest thing, because when you look at this, it's almost the black that shows the light. But that's where I can keep coming in here, putting a little bit more white right around that black part and I think it will there we go that's looking good okay and keep the white of his eyes showing but that's a sweet little puppy okay and then I'll put a little bit more shading on top of his nose 
to lighten that, anything like this that I can add. Then, with this black dog's toes, I haven't done it yet, so I can come in here with a little ink tents and do the space in between the toes. On this puppy, I did it with the thread. And, and where there was a wide space between the toe, I just, while I was sewing, I would turn the width of my zigzag narrower or thinner. Hello! You don't have to worry, sweetie. So anyway, I, I think the background, I think I'm happy with it. I'm done with the background. Then I'm going to have to do some more. I think I'm going to want to take a very black thread and do the same outlining with this one. Or maybe, I don't know, if the black doesn't pop him out, maybe I'll use a white and try that. But I think I want to give him some of that same punch as I did with his brother. And... Um, so anyway, but I've got to do the thread painting of the eyes. And then I think all I'm going to have to do next, I've got to put on the rest of the border. And then I'm going to quilt it. And with something like this, where you've got, hold on one second, everybody. Let me grab that pencil. I think on something like this, where you have the grasses, and you have the puppies. All I'm going to do for quilting is just to kind of do a meandering soft line. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to go do a horizontal meandering line. I will not go into the puppy. And if I want, if I want the puppies to pop, I can take and cut this shape out of an extra piece of batting. And put a couple drops of glue on the back so that that extra batting will stay with him. And an extra one here. And that way, then when I put the regular batting and backing, they will pop up a little bit. And I think that would be a really nice thing for the pops. So they'll actually kind of puff up just a little. And so I will then quilt around them. And I'll probably outline their face so that pops. Outline the little creases in their body so that will pop. Same thing for this guy. He looks sad now he doesn't have his eyes. But we'll, we'll make sure that we get him some eyes because he needs, he needs to be able to see too. But um, it's so funny because he started out right away, the cute puppy. And this one started out boring. But since I've done so much on this puppy, now this is the one that's the cute. And poor little guy, he seems all left alone and ignored. So I will make sure that I do his eyes. How about a neutral color around the black one so the stitches... Ah, that sounds like a good idea, Linda. Yes. That sounds like a good idea because I do like how this outlining has popped this one forward. And I thought, mm, what kind of outline, what color? But that's a, that's a neat idea is to put some neutral around him. So I could try like a neutral gray, a light gray maybe. I, I think that might work really well. Thank you, Linda. Thank you very much. But anyway, I think I really like this inner border of green. I think that it does a very good job of, whoops, let me see if I can get that off. Okay. Does a very good job of setting off the background and then having the final border of black. And as I said before, too, I'm thinking of doing a knife pleat so I have the batting and backing. I will trim the batting down a half an inch, then I'll fold in a quarter of an inch on the backing and this, and then just do a nice little running stitch so that it truly has the look of a picture frame, because that's what I like. With my art quilts, 
I like to finish them with a picture frame. So I think while you're talking, because I don't want to quite run yet, let me, I've got, a, I've got my medium in this container and I put a little bit of water to thin it. Let me put that away. But while we're talking, let me get another bobbin in my machine. And I'll finish. Turn this around towards me. Okay. All right. Let me put a new bobbin in. And let's see what you're talking about. Um, the brand of pencils I use. Absolutely. Good question, Alexis. These are called ink tents. Now, they are expensive. I'm going to tell you right now. They're expensive. And these are an actual ink dye. They're not like a regular colored pencil. They have a dye in them that just blossoms. And so they are expensive. I have the 24-pack. You can buy a 12-pack. But... They are worth it. Now, last, I've had these for five or six years. So, and the only one, I did buy another one um, to get another white one. But here, you can also get ink tense blocks. And these are a block of that ink pigment that you can then um, use like you would a watercolor. And you can put the medium on them, and then make a little pot of it in the center. This is good for, like, backgrounds and larger expanses, okay? So these are made by Derwent. It's a British product. And ink tents. And because you do want it to be, you do want it to be ink pencils that are perfect for fabric. Okay, ink pencils, because they have, that particular company has other products and uh, different kinds of pencils. So you want the ink tents. I think my ink tents container has um, peacocks on it, but I think, oops, okay, I don't know why it seemed to run out, but... I think the new one has whales on it. So, all right. I noticed here that I, I missed a little bit. So I'm going to come back over this part. But if you have more. Ah, okay. Yeah. So then your, your prisoner colors are wonderful. And with fabric, you need a gel media, a textile medium. And then... You need this ink tents, the actual dye pencils. So, all right. Let me make sure I get this back. Because this way, when I get the rest of these last two borders on, then I'll be able to hold... Uh, gee, Deb. So, oh. I need to rethread my needle. I thought, what in the world? Oh, my goodness. Uh-oh. Let me see. Got caught somewhere. Ah, it got tangled on. Okay. Let me show you. This is a good thing to show you. One thing I don't like about this Elna is it gets this loosey-goosey thread on this thing that moves up and down. And often it will pop completely out of this and then you end up with a bird's nest. And I hate that. Well, this time, it bounced up and down so much that it knotted itself on that. So, I didn't want to just yank it and drag it. So, it's the best thing because you don't want to damage your tension disc or any of your springs. So, the best thing was to bring that up and cut off that knot. All right. So, but I hate that it, it just, for whatever reason, it doesn't have a smooth tension. And so you'll watch it sometimes kind of hopping. The thread will hop up here. And then when it gets loose, it comes out. And what a pain. 
So this might be why Eleanor Burns stops being the spokesperson for the Elna machine because it is a unfortunate, it is a real pain with this machine. I won't buy another one. Let's put it that way. I like it that it's a tough girl, but unfortunately, it's not the very best with tension. So, okay. Let's try this again. Anybody? Hi, Felicia. Hi. Oh, good. So the new Elna's don't do this. Yes, this is the Elna... Quilter's Dream 720 that was all the rage back in 2005. So, but not now. <laughs> so this machine, I mean, it's 15 years old. But I did have it in the shop recently. And um, I didn't actually tell him it does that. But it didn't get fixed. So. Okay, now. Let me see. All right. So, good. Got that all. Got that all caught. Hold on just a second. Let me back this up. All right. So, now I'm going to sew the border down this side. So, feel free, Janome. Yes. I love Janome's. I love, love, love Juki's. Um... You know, I would love some of those expensive ones like Bernina's and stuff, but they're a little pricey for my blood. So, okay. So now I'm putting, I'm putting this, the picture border on this side. And then I can hold it up and I think you'll appreciate why I chose these fabrics. But I'm hoping to get this quilted tomorrow so I can give it to the young man who was the artist of the original inspiration. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe before Christmas or maybe after Christmas, you'll see when I start back up and we'll do some more art quilts. I've been real pleased at the number of you who are interested in art quilts and have a lot of talent with the art quilts because I am learning as much from you as you could possibly learn from me. That's for sure. So, okay. Now one more side and then I can hold this up and show you. So excited to be almost done. And I haven't decided if I'm going to just use my domestic machine to quilt this or if I'll put it on my frame. Although, oh, I put another one on my frame already. I guess I could put this one. I could probably figure out some way to have it on there too. I'm not a good quilter on a domestic machine. I'm the first one to admit it. I do a much better job with the long arm they say it's either you are you move the paper and keep the pencil still or you move the pencil on and the paper is still so for me it just feels better to use the long arm i'm sure it's a brain thing i have seen people do most amazing quilting on their domestic Okay, let me get this trimmed and ironed, and then I'll show you, and, okay, whoops, hold on just a second. I want to make sure I cut this carefully, so hold on, let me flip it over here, make sure it's lined up, and then trim. I've been known to trim too quickly, and whoops, so... Okay, any other questions? You have Brother 1500 straight stitch. I can't believe I did that. Hold on. Pink. Okay. 
here. Whoops. Okay. Here we go. I have a sister. Do you have one, Marsha? Oh, that's great. It, Francis has a Janome from 1993. Yeah, they work really good. Okay, let me do this side, and then I can hold it up and show you. Any other question? I'm so glad, Felicia. And you know what? What I would like to, if I could do one thing, it would be to encourage everyone to try an art quilt because they truly are fun and easy. And if you don't like following directions, if you like doing your own thing, then that's the kind of quilting that you will love. You know, so I used to wonder, I would try so hard to do traditional quilts and I just seem to not be good at it and it turned out that with my free spirit I needed to just get out there and do my own thing and that's what art quilting feels like for me it's it's freedom and you know when I was a child give me crayons scissors and glue and I was so happy. So for me, it takes me back to that, that carefree time when you just cut and colored in anything. It could be any color and any design you wanted. It was your world. Okay, so here we go. What do you think? I think that works. And I think once I get the black puppy his eyes and find a way for him to pop out a little better, I think it'll be a good thing. So, okay. And then I'll get it, I will get it quilted and then I will work on a knife edge um, finish for it so it will have the look and feel of a picture frame okay sometimes to do the picture frame i might do a little quilting in the border a line or some you know to make it look like it's a decorative picture frame so here it is and i'll make sure that i show you the final finish um, Sunday. Okay. I'd like to do that. Oh, Cheryl is amazing at it. Amazing at it. In fact, real quickly, I know I'm running late, but real quickly, let me show you a few pictures. Michelle sent me some great photographs of an, from an art quilter today. And then let me show you Cheryl's, Jody's latest art quilts. And also um, Linda's. So let me see. Let me bring these up. Um, let me see. Let me see. Now, Alexis, she's been working on her hand embroidery. Beautiful, beautiful job. Come on, picture. The computer is very slow tonight. Let me turn this around to get that glare off of it. But this is what Alexis has been working on. Very patient, excellent hand embroiderer. Way to go. Now let me go back to here. And Dora, Dora's already left us, but um, I'll show her soon. Okay, here we go. 
this is oh Jody, be still my heart. She has so much talent, and she took the time to write a tutorial so that I can share it with y'all. And so soon, I will show you how to do these actual portraiture quilts. So I'm very excited. And look at her beautiful dog. What a tribute to that wonderful, wonderful dog. So very talented lady. All right. Let's see. Who else? B did a really cute art quilt of a cow, which just tickles me to no end. I mean, how cute is this thing? So, that is a happy cow. All right. Then let me go to, who else? Linda. Linda does some beautiful art quilt work. And I got a whole bunch, so I'll just go down the line kind of quickly here and show you all her stuff. Wonderful. Fabric painting, dyeing, look at this. And I love this, that simple exercise in thread painting and looking like a dust storm. Here are some of her hand dyes. Look at this amazing quilt. Okay. And this one, and I love it. She signs these. So remember, people, sign your quilt. Isn't that amazing? I mean, this is a talented woman here. Very talented woman. Look at this. Now, look at the simplicity. You can easily count the fabrics. You can easily define the shapes. And look how amazing that is and how well that works. That's wonderful, beautiful reflection of the moon. Great. And I love it. She used plaid fabrics, everything. So... It's just what you can do with fabric is dreamy. All right. Now, let's see. Okay. Michelle sent these. And, oh, I forgot the name now. I've been so busy today. I've been running around. But I will find it and put it in the bottom. Michelle sent me these art quilts that were on a display that were being exhibited. And these are amazing, amazing. And But look how real. It's like they step right out of the quilt. So the artist must be Bizet, Bizot Butler. And, oh, my gosh, they're just so awesome. So do you see what you can do with fabric? It, and, and you see the face. You see the personality. It doesn't matter what colors the fabric are. You, it comes right through. The humanity comes right through. So to me, art quilts are, are just an amazing thing with endless, endless possibilities. Okay, I'm not sure if there are any more art quilts. Um, if I missed your art quilt, I apologize. But um, I will try to show it Sunday if I missed it. I apologize for that. But anyway, thank you for finding part two. There is a part one for some of you out there because somehow I messed it up. But thank you. I will be back with these Art Quilt Thursdays, but it might be a couple months. So if you have subscribed, and hit the little notification, the little bell, and you'll be notified. Also, um, I'm going to be here this Sunday. And I'll do Sundays, even though I might take one or two off. But I will continue with my Sundays. So I'm excited. Let me get back to my screen so I can tell you all good night. And I'll see you this Sunday. Oh, your brother was an artist. No wonder you love art, Miss Marsha. So, and I think, you know, I think some of that rubs off on you too. So, well, take good care of yourselves. And, uh, oh, thank you, Diane57. Yes, if you'd like and share. And don't forget, there is a part one. So, hopefully that'll be up too. So, you can go back and catch what I did the first part of the evening. Take good care of yourselves. And all you have to have is a pair of scissors, some fabric, and some glue, and you can be an art quilter.
I'll be back in a couple months for Thursday nights. Y'all take good care, and I'll see most of you on Sunday. Bye-bye, guys. Take care. <laughs>